boldly engaging the mindless propaganda of our time, apparently with reason. This is Rage of the Age. This is Rage of the Age, and we have with us today a story-driven filmmaker, brand strategist, and speaker. He has been producing documentaries for purpose-driven entrepreneurs for over 15 years. He's also coming out by the end of this year with a new book called Dramatic Demonstration of Proof. I want to introduce to you today, Jude Charles. Jude, welcome to the show. Philip, thank you for having me. Um, it is definitely a pleasure, and I'm looking forward to the conversation we're going to have today. So you're a storyteller. Yes. Like, we still have professional storytellers, like the bards <laughs> of old, traveling about with, you know, singing their tales of great feats. But you do that in a different way, don't you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I do it through visual format, right? So I, I get to see behind the scenes of the lives of these uh, entrepreneurs that I work with, purpose-driven entrepreneurs, and I hold a camera and I, I literally am like a fly on the wall. I get to see the same way you hear the stories of the old guys talking about what they used to do. Like I get to see it happen right in front of me and then I craft, a, I interview the client and I craft the, uh, a story around it. But that, I, that's what I love to do. It's what I've been doing for the past 15 years and uh, I love doing it. And I've seen some of the testimonials uh, from your um, your web page, yeah, or well, website, yeah. and um, it, it's it's pretty neat how they explain what you do. It's yeah. um, it's not business like. Can I say it like that? You sure. you, sh- you show up <laughs> and you you get at the core who they are, and you mm-hmm. kind of present that in the form of story, and and they're like, wow, that really like had an impact in our business and what I'm doing and telling the story. Because uh, normally with a business, you get like the the catalog type, uh, well, here's your plan, select what you want, we'll zip it to you, and of course, we'll collect payments. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't work for you too bad, have a nice day, we'll do, you know, hopefully you'll do business again, and that's sort of the feel I get for most business anyway. Yeah. Your, your approach seems a little bit different. Yeah, I, you know, in order to tell someone's story, you've got to really know who they are. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not the type of entrepreneur that is, I hold a camera just because I really love filmmaking. I do love filmmaking, but mm. I also want to serve my clients. I also want to make sure that I am showing them in the best way possible. Um, and the work that we're doing is so deep. A lot of the clients that I work with, they, they're they vulnerable in the stories that they share. Um, like I, work with, I worked with a business coach who um, she's telling her story of... Uh, going through infertility issues. Like she's, she's 40, in her 40s, she's right. very first time wanting to be a mother and she's having issues having children, right? That's a very vulnerable story to tell. And I don't wanna just say, all right, can you say that line over? Can you- uh, Say it louder, you, say it louder. Like, <laughs> Right, like that's, that's not the kind of work that I do. It's, it's right. more about like showing real life so that, because it, it, it's business, but it's also like, people do business with people that they know, like, and trust, right? And so how does someone get to know, like, and trust you? They got to know who you really are. Yes. Um, as I've always, I don't know why or how, where I got it from, but I've always envisioned um, that if I were to get in business, that's what I would do is tell a real story, not, you know, a scripted story, but tell a real story about who these entrepreneurs are. From what you've said before, it's, uh, this isn't something... That, that I, if I understand right, you didn't go to school and learn how to tell a story and suddenly decide to tell stories that it was from you sitting up at night with your dad, yeah, watching yeah. TV shows yep. and just getting immersed into that story. Right? Yeah, yeah. I used to spend Saturday nights specifically, like I would spend Saturday nights watching, at first we started watching Cops, the TV show Cops, right? Yeah. And that was like maybe the very first quote unquote reality show that ever existed. Uh, yeah. Um, but then we would also watch like TV shows like Nash Bridges and uh, NYPD Blue. Like those are old school shows that don't show anymore. But right, right. The thing I loved is that the detectives in the shows, right? They mm-hmm. would try to solve the crime and figure out well, who did it. More importantly, why did they do it? Mm-hmm. That same approach of why is what I do with the entrepreneurs that I work with. I don't want to just. I don't care. I almost don't care about what you sell. I want to know how. Why did you make the decision to sell that? Like, if you're a business coach, why did you decide to be a business coach? If you're, I worked with a woman who sold jewelry. Why did you, why jewelry? Why lipstick and cosmetics, right? Mm-hmm. What led you down that path? Um, 
Yeah, I, I just studied that. I don't know why, but I studied that when I was watching those TV shows and I studied how they would ask why, they would get to know the motive, they would get to know the families. Yeah. Um, and it's that that made, it was a bigger mission. It wasn't just about solving the crime. It was about getting justice. And that's such a bigger mission than just yeah. we found the person that did it. So, yeah. Well, I'm at the same thing could be uh, said about you and, and storytelling. I mean, why, why take to storytelling? Yeah. Because uh, most, like I said, <laughs> the typical business approach is, is you have your catalog of services and you corral people to it. And yeah. you, you just, it, you, you can, you can market in a number of different ways. In fact, most marketing doesn't involve, involve much storytelling at all that I could see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just straight up cattle driven methods that that works for some uh, businesses. So, you know, why go the story route? The simple answer, I think, is story is what allows us to get to know who we are. Like, for example, if I'm I'm working with you, Philip, the first question on my mind is not necessarily what do you sell, but like, why should I choose to work with you versus someone else? Mm. Why, why Philip? What, what makes Philip different, right? Right. It's not going to be that you, there's other people that like me that hold cameras. There's other filmmakers out there. Why Jude? I think why I chose storytelling is because when I got started in business at 17 years old, um, I failed my first five years in business. Oh my. <laughs> I struggled to make $20,000 a year. And you know, 20,000 for a 17, 18 year old is, is decent, but it wasn't mm. why I got into business. <laughs> um, what helped me make the shift was, uh, I'll never forget the day that I woke up at, at seven o'clock in the morning and I woke up to the sounds of chains hitting the floor. Mm. And it was always a nightmare of mine. I'm like, I don't want to, I never want to hear this sound. But what it was, I woke up and I, I ran outside. And what it was, it was a tow truck driver coming to repossess my car for the second time in eight months. Mm. And I walked back in the house. I sat on the edge of my bed, hands, my head in my hands. And I, mm. I, um, I was just like, you know what? Maybe this is it. Like, I don't, I don't really know what I'm doing here. Like, I, I, I spent five years doing it. I, I gave it a good run. I'm 21, 22 at this time. Like, you know, and it, it was fun to say I started this. I did this. Mm -hmm. In that moment, I get a phone call from a client that I had been working with, Keisha Dior. And for one reason or another, I picked up the phone and she is excited on the other end. And she's like, Jude, Jude, you won't believe it. You won't believe it. She's like, I just got off the phone with my accountant and he told me I crossed over the million dollar mark. Hmm. Now, Keisha Dior, I had been working with for a year. We created a documentary series, and she launched her company. She had built it from the ground up, launched the company. Um, and part of her launching the company was this documentary series. So she had hmm. made a million dollars from a documentary series that I had done for her, um, selling lipsticks, cosmetics. Meanwhile, I had only made $3,000 on that project. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. In that moment, it made me realize I had a behind the scenes look at what it took to get to that level. I knew her story. Mm -hmm. And then I started researching other entrepreneur stories and like really digging into like, okay, how did they like, like someone like Steve Harvey who went homeless for three years, how did he take it to the next level? How did he, how was he able to do that? Um, that for me, that's why storytelling matters is because mm -hmm. it's those stories that help us understand, even when there's a dark road ahead of us, that helps us understand, like, no, someone else has done it. I can do it, too. Right. So so when you hear you hear the uh, chains hitting, that wasn't from a Dickens novel of uh, no. the ghost of Christmas past to come and, <laughs> you know, confront you. It was your toe being car <laughs> or your, your car being towed off. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, you bring up a point, though, that I've heard from a lot of entrepreneurs and those who've gone into business is. A lot of times there's failure before there's success. Yeah. yeah. And you said five, five years. Five years. And, and you're like, you're scraping yeah. to get by. And trying to figure it out. Trying to figure cry. it out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but, I mean, that's, that's the thing I think that's a part, it's a part of the story for a lot of entrepreneurs is there, there's a struggle to succeed. Yeah. There's, there's an investment in your time and effort and it, you don't just show up and boom, you succeed. Right. That, yeah. That's never the case that I can see. Yeah, no, not at all. I think there's there's definitely a, a struggle season. Now, I don't think what I often say is I don't think I needed to struggle for those five years. Part of it was just pride and not mm -hmm. searching for help. Um, right. 
because I think after the first year, I would have realized like, look, I, I don't know what, what I'm doing here. Um, but I had this sense of pride at 17, 18, starting the mm. business. It's like, no, I've yeah. got to figure this out on my own. Like I decided not to go to college. I'm the last of 10 children. The only one of the 10 children that didn't go to college. And it's like, no, I've got to figure this out and prove everybody wrong. I didn't need to struggle for those five years, but it is in business. It's not easy. Even mm. at the level that I'm at now, like there's other issues and problems that comes up. It's not, right. it's not always going to be easy. Um, but it's those failures and those struggles that help you get to the next point in your life, um, which oftentimes that's what, that's what makes for a great story as well. Because our stories are what form us in a way. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. so presenting that story is presenting the, the person in the story as to why I should care to work with you or not work with you or listen to you or not listen to you. Yeah. Stories connect us, right? Like that's, Every we're all storytellers. Every single day we wake up and we're telling stories. Like if you come home and you know your wife asks you, Well, how was your day? You're mm -hmm. getting ready to go into a story about how your day was. If you just say, Oh, my day was fine, they're gonna be like, Okay, what happened today? Right? Like yeah. you're you're walking Tell me a story. Tell me a story. <laughs> but it's those stories that shape our worldview, they shape our frame, they also shape us in business. Like mm. Steve Jobs started Apple, and there's a story behind how he started Apple. Like that's why we connect to Apple so much, right? Like it's not, mm -hmm. it's not just I really wanted to create a cool thing. That's not a story. It's more about like what was it being in your garage, wanting to make sure that everyone was able to access a computer. Like right. why did why was that important to you? Why was it important to challenge the status quo? Mm -hmm. um, it's those stories that make us want to care and want to connect with the people that start the company and leader of the company. Um, and it's why I, I if I. It's like I asked the question at the beginning, why should I do business with Philip? It's going to be because of Philip's story. Speaking of stories of people that you've worked with, I mean, you've worked with people like uh, Steve Harvey and Les yeah. Brown. Yeah. Uh, and Steve Harvey's just a hilarious man. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but there's, more that, there's more to him than just his hilarious demeanor you see on TV. There, there's yeah. a whole story behind him. Uh, you know, Les Brown, motivational speaker. Mm -hmm. I mean, he has he has a, a lengthy story of yeah. his life of things going on yeah. with him. H how did you come across working with them, and, and what was that like? So the first five years that I failed, um, I, Keisha Dior had success in her documentary series, and it, it made me take a step back and realize, like, like, you know, I have the blueprint as to how to build the business, but there was something else missing. Missing, which was I didn't understand marketing and sales. I didn't understand. Mm. I wasn't telling my own story. Like I would go to clients and pitch myself, <laughs> but I wasn't telling them how I was a 17 year old kid who decided to take a risk on starting a business. Um, mm -hmm. And so I went back and learned marketing and sales. And then literally every client that came after Keisha Dior was through referral. So getting to work mm -hmm. with Steve Harvey was because I had another client in Baltimore who had partnered with Steve Harvey and knew that Steve Harvey wanted to document his book tour. Um, Working with Les Brown, that was actually through a partnership with, again, another client, Andy Enriquez, who was a student of Les Brown. And Andy, we, Andy and I were doing a documentary. Um, and so we partnered with Les Brown to be a part of it, too. And so it's, it's all through referrals. It's all through, um, honestly, just loving the craft of what I do and then people talking about it, right? Like, is, referral is always going to be the number one way to get clients. Um, of course, I do other things now, like podcasting and in masterminds, but it was all through referrals. It was always just through, man, Jude really told a great story there. I, I want to work with him, too. So in, in essence, a referral is somebody telling a story yeah. about somebody else, right? Yep. yep. <laughs> so, I mean, Absolutely. your, your theory is, is panning out in different directions. Here. In different dire it's like what you said. Right. You, watched, you watched the testimonials of my clients talking about what it's like to work with me. They're just telling stories. Right. Like Darnielle in the beginning of that video saying like how, you know, Jude really likes to go deep. He comes in, he asks us a lot of questions. She's telling you about the very specific moment in time when we work together. Um, that is, yeah, it's just, it's storytelling. Storytelling is going to be the one thing that you can't, if you want to succeed in business, you can't not do, right? You're going to need it in your website. You're going to need it uh, when you're presenting. You're going to need it when, um, you know, sometimes there's even stories on the back of water bottles, right? Like mm -hmm. stories yeah. is going to, it's everywhere. It's well, yeah, everywhere. Yeah, your milk carton, your, uh, yeah. your happy meal box, or so, there's always something to read. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah and, so, story. and that's why it's important to master the art of storytelling. Right. I think over the years, 
the last five years, storytelling has become a buzzword. But mm. if you keep in mind that a story is about a very specific moment in time, just the same way I told you a story of what happened the day that Keisha called me, or I tell mm. the story, often I'll tell the story of how I got started at 17 years old. My TV production teacher handed me um, a yellow envelope with a set of business cards inside. Mm. It's about a very specific day, May 5th, 2006. I'll never forget it, right? And so cool. <laughs> there's stories everywhere. Um, and there's opportunities to share stories in different ways. Like I'm sharing stories here on a podcast through audio. Mm -hmm. Stories are everywhere. And, and it's important to remember the very specific moment in time that helps illustrate and translate what you're doing and why you're doing it. I, I, I don't know. I kind of want to take a, a tangent for a bit and sure. uh, consider the idea of, um, I think you're talking about real stories yeah. versus fabricated stories. <laughs> if you know where I'm going with this, it's um, everyone, everyone can give a story. Mm -hmm. They can present a, a, a face of something they want to represent, but it may not be a true representation. It might be a totally like the typical marketing. You know, we're this. And then your experience is absolutely different from the picture. Yeah. You know, order this. This hamburger looks this way and you get it. And it looks like they just tossed it together from a distance. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. nothing matches the story you're telling me. I think what you're talking about is, is a genuine, real story that you're presenting, that there's power in the reality, right? Yeah, yeah, there is power in the reality. I Often what I say is, um, especially with what I get to do through documentary filmmaking, what I'm doing is showing the truth. You can't fake a story. Mm. As much as, like, I think, especially now in 2021, people are, people's BS meter, they're, they're really in tune with their <laughs> BS meter. That's right. <laughs> you can't fake that. And so um, what I love about what I get to do is that I, I point a camera to you and in my, so the same way the detectives were searching for the truth in the, in the TV shows that I was watching growing up, I'm searching for the truth as well. And if I see something that's not real, I'm not going to show it. Mm. Like if I see you're faking it. I'm, and so I think, yeah, for sure. It's, you can't, I just don't think you can fake a, a story. Mm. Like people can tell that you're faking it. Right. And so um, it's like the. There is a, a documentary I did with Stefan Georgi, who is a copywriter. Right. And copywriting is not a sexy thing. You, showing someone <laughs> writing words is not exciting. Sexy. Yes. It's not exciting <laughs> at all. But there's this scene in the first 60 seconds of his documentary where he is um, spending time with his daughter. And there's something that happens. I'm not going to give it away because I want you guys to watch it. But mm -hmm. there's something that happens. And it's like you can't fake that. Even if he's telling the story, he's retelling the story to someone, like you can tell like, oh, that's something that really happened and it was embarrassing and but he he handled it well. Like I think you just you can't get away from uh, the importance of storytelling is it opens the it opens the door for people to connect with you. And if you're looking to tell a fake story, they're not going to connect with you because they're going to tell, "Oh, you you're telling a fake story here." Well, and you're connecting with the fake presentation, not the real person. Right. Exactly. There, there's not a real true connection. Yeah. 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 So, so what do you do? You, you, you like hang out in somebody's life all day with a camera and like stalk them around. Like, you know, like they do some of them reality shows, like every aspect of their life under scrutiny or is there, do you have a different approach? <laughs> no, I, you know, it's, it's, it's a little different. I'm not spending every day, all day with them, but I usually I'll spend about two weeks at a time with my clients. Um, so like I mentioned with Stefan, the that scene that we got with his daughter, I was at, I was in San Diego with him for two weeks um, as he was speaking at different events and he was doing a mastermind as well. Um, and I spent two weeks and I, I'm a fly on the wall, whatever they're doing, spending time with their family or or, you know, out teaching or whatever it is. I'm spending all day with them, usually 12 hours a day um, getting to see their life. But I'm also looking for something very specific. So the way that I work with my clients is I start with the process called road mapping and we spent eight hours together that's not filming at all that's just getting to know who they are what they're about why they started the business that they start and in that session that gives me their core values their philosophies and beliefs that gives me some of the stories that they already tell and it's at that point that's what i mean by i'm searching for the truth because you've told me all these things in eight hours mm. but now i have to document that let me see if it's really what happens in real life and so although i spend 12 hours a day for two weeks with them 
it's not always like I'm filming everything. I'm just searching for the truth. I'm searching for these moments that are happening in their lives that can help illustrate the stories that they tell. Um, but that usually happens. So there's five trips. It depends on the client, but five trips will say at the least for six months, um, two weeks at a time. And I just, I, I get to be a fly on the wall. I see them uh, live life and I don't direct those scenes at all. I just, I just point a camera and I'm looking at, okay, what is happening mm -hmm. here? I show it in a real way. So how do you determine what's pr presentation and what's real? Because the temptation I can imagine is I'm being filmed. Yeah. Right. I'm not going to, even though it's like, yeah, you'll be like, just be yourself. Don't like, yeah, I'm yeah. not even here. I'm just a fly on the wall. Yeah. You're a very big fly. And I know <laughs> you're there and I know you're capturing everything I do on a camera. Yeah. It's, it's probably going to alter how somebody does their life to some degree. So how do you get to the bare bones person versus I know there's a camera looking at me. There's a secret behind it. I think because I do not direct what often happens and, and clients will say this all the time. They'll say, Oh, I forgot you were even here. And it's oh, that wow. secret behind it is that yeah. literally because I'm not bothering them because I'm not telling them, Hey, stand over here or do this. <laughs> They forget I'm, I'm quiet. Most of the time I'm quiet the entire time. Yeah. It's like yeah. they forget that I'm there. And so there are these moments that I capture that are like, honestly, it's like, um, I often say like, what would it be like if, if we could see Jeff Bezos building Amazon from the early days? It's kind of mm. like that. All of the struggle and the failure and some of the bad things that happen, I'm capturing those. Mm. And clients have no issue with it because half the time they forget I'm there, but the other well, part is, is there. I was, I was going to ask that. Do you get like the hand of the camera thing? Like, don't film this. You know? <laughs> no, but I do. I mean, I am, I am sensitive to, even though if it's filmed, I'm sensitive to what gets, makes the final edit because there are proprietary things that I probably can't show and different things like that. But oh, sure. Yeah. But, uh, I, I don't I rarely ever get a client that tells me don't film this unless it's a very private conversation and mm -hmm. you know there's they know that hey this is a meeting that we probably can't film then that's something different but usually I I film it and then we talk about it afterward whether it can be used or not so, you, so it would appear that you uh you kind of immerse yourself oh yeah in the person me you know like I don't know it's like it's like a twist you do what actors do Mm -hmm. in becoming a character yeah. but you're doing it not becoming a character but analyzing a character does that make sense that makes sense yeah that's exactly what yeah. i do i one of my core values is depth versus width mm -hmm. and so i only work with five clients a year and part of that is because i do immerse myself into their business i immerse myself into who they are because again you asked me like how can i tell the difference between someone that's mm -hmm. faking and someone that's being real it is because I am immersing myself into who they are. And so I know the moments when they're being fake. I know the moments where they're not really being vulnerable. One of the requirements to work with me um, that I often go through in the onboarding process with clients is I'm like, look, if you're not willing to be vulnerable, you're not willing to show your true self, we're not a good fit. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I, so, I can imagine that. So, <laughs> so your process is, it sounds like your process is like six months to a year in working with your client. It is, yeah. Yeah, sometimes three years. Um, three years. Yeah, yeah, and it, but it is, it is because now there's that part of me how I work with them, but there's the results that they get as well, right? It is mm -hmm. because because I film them in this way and I show them in their true self, it allows their tribe to deepen their relationship with them, right? So if we talk about a Stephen George I who his big why is to help people escape the cave. That's the way that he puts it. Um, mm -hmm. He's helping other copywriters and marketers understand how to do what he does. But, you know, in order to do that, again, there's other copywriters out there. There's other people that have that kind of business. Why mm -hmm. Stefan? Right. It's because of these things that I show about Stefan that makes you want to connect with him. And if you want to connect with him, then you want to buy whatever he has to offer. Um, it's because of that that I get to work with him for three years. These clients are being a, they're being seen in a new way that have never been seen before. And they're like, wait, I need to keep showing up in this way. I need people to continue to see me this way. And so that's why we continue to work together. You're listening to Rage of the Age. Rage of the Age. Politics, religion, economics, and history with a conservative bend. When you finally had the final product of the... Uh the, the film, uh, I, I, I'm going to go documentary if there's a yeah. better term. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
you, 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 you finish the documentary. Do you just give it to them or is there something you do with it beyond that? Uh, what's the next step? Yeah. So once the doc, it's a documentary series is normally what I do a three part or a six part documentary series. Okay. And, um, and then I, yes, I hand it over to the client and then usually I do a big launch around it, either through email or through like, uh, I've had a client do it through a Facebook live. Like it depends on whatever the client already has set up, but mm. they're launching that to their tribe, their email list to the world and showing the world, this is who I am in a way that you've never seen it before. So it's kind of like, uh, if you've ever seen the Tony Robbins, I am not your guru documentary. I didn't do that documentary, but. It's kind of the same way where they, you got a behind the scenes look at one of his events and then they launch it on Netflix and then a lot of people get to see it. It's the same process, same effect that I'm creating with my clients um, where they're already using the platforms that they use, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. They're using those platforms to share it with the world. The, the things you've just mentioned, <laughs> I think, is what's created a hunger for a connectivity with a person. Yes. Yeah. Which, which is uh, storytelling is a, a great way to do it is yeah. to learn about somebody because you know it, even if it's a real person using these platforms it still feels like a robot half the time yeah there, there, there's no connectivity there's there's no human interaction and it just feels like you're cheated in the yeah. process in that interaction whereas i i think we we crave something in our humanity of connecting mm -hmm. that we've kind of taken away a bit in how we interact yeah yeah absolutely i think you know, social media has opened the door for entrepreneurs, for everybody, right, to to tell their own story. Mm -hmm. We've seen that happen so many times. Like, let's say something crazy happens on a plane and that person goes to Twitter and they start telling the hotel of what happened on the plane. I saw a really good story once. I haven't been able to find it. I saw it years ago and I actually went back looking for it. A, a woman that tells a story about her mother leaving her home to make soup and soup take the soup takes six hours to make. Oh, wow. Good soup. <laughs> right? <laughs> she came back home and uh, the mother came back home six hours later in the soup. The daughter thought she had all the time in the world to make the soup. She heard the car coming down the street. She threw everything in the pot to try to make the soup. <laughs> and the mom came in. She tasted the soup and she realized the soup hadn't been simmering for three hours. Uh, uh -huh. She tells yeah. that whole elaborate story. <laughs> she tells that whole elaborate story to make the point. Don't, right. don't, don't rush the process. Right. Right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but that's what social media has allowed us to do is to be able to use these stories from our childhood, like me, you know, watching um, TV with my dad, watching those detective shows. We use those stories, those moments in time to connect to another part that we're trying. We're trying to connect to this point that we're making. Um, that's the power of storytelling. That's the power of these platforms that have that have uh, given us the ability to use it right from our phones mm -hmm. to tell our stories. I think that is why. You can't hide from storytelling. Um, if you do it, it'll connect you on such a deeper level and it, it'll really mm -hmm. take what you're doing to another level. It, it reminds me of my time at university where I was in a communications class and I was reading an article that doing research for a paper. Mm -hmm. um, I was reading an article where it talked about a, a, a fear of uh, many young people today. And I don't know what category it was at the time, yeah. <laughs> but uh, of being trapped in a narrative mm. like that we're so used to a quick jab of information and but then i can cut myself off from that yeah whereas like you were talking about the shows you're watching those are hour maybe two hour shows yeah. Yeah. and you get there's that word again immersed yeah. into the story and what's going on and it speaks to you it may even influence you yeah and the article was saying there's kind of like a fear that if I stay into your story too long, it might affect. Me. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's like these buffers and walls we keep shoving up to not be influenced by this narrative. But the, the story is how we connect mm -hmm. that. That's how you you hear what somebody's saying. That's how you explain to somebody what you're saying. Yeah. So it's almost like even with the matter of communicational uh, methods we have, we're not truly communicating. Yeah. What we're doing when we try to cut off those stories is we're we're cut on we're cutting off stories that don't fit our frame. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's a big part of the cancel culture nowadays is that if we see something somebody's doing that we don't like or saying something that we don't like, we immediately say we don't like it and we don't want to pay attention to that anymore. Um, 
but there's another part of it that is for the type of person that's very open minded, right? So I I talked about like in the beginning how I at first didn't listen to or read any stories of entrepreneurs that, mm -hmm. you know, what they did in their business. But now I read a lot of biographies. Like, I've, I And you as an entrepreneur. <laughs> and I was an entrepreneur. Right. Right. But I was close minded. And I think the the importance of that is perspective. Right? right. I I tell the story of Keisha and how she was able to make a million dollars for something that I created for her. Mm -hmm. I could have been very bitter in that moment and said, you know what, this is it. That's of course, true. that's a sign. That's a sign that I should quit. Most important story is the story that you tell in your head, right? Mm. And if you don't tell yourself the right story, whether or not you want to be open-minded or not, like if you're not telling yourself the right story, it'll close you off. And that's why we shut off stories um, that can possibly negatively influence us, but there's also positives too. And so we all know that's happening on social media. There's negative things that's happening on social media, but there's positive. And it's, it's, a, matter of, it's a matter of perspective right? There's always two sides to every story, sometimes even three sides. But it's a matter of perspective. And it's from that perspective that that lens that we have on, like I always say, uh, we are all born with eyes, the ability mm. to see, we all have vision. But if you don't have on the right set of lenses, mm. you may not have on the right perspective, because you can't read the words that are coming across your screen. And so, right. yeah, right. it's all about perspective. Well, this perspective and what you see like I look at, uh, say, for example, articles and blogs that I read nowadays yeah. compared to what I'm accustomed to reading and a paragraph is maybe two sentences. Yeah. And, and then, of course, and, and I, I've looked at the, the strategies behind it and everything, you know, space it out. Don't don't oppress them with words and different things. And But I'm thinking the reason I'm reading it is because I want to know the details. Yeah. But you're just like, do 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 space doo -doo 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 space oh here's a link here's a picture subscribe mm -hmm. to my thing and then uh, and i'm like i just want to read <laughs> your title said this and you're not delivering on what you said and i don't i'm no i'm not smarter for the one minute i invested in reading your short article <laughs> i yeah. i miss being i be i miss being able to read an in-depth thing they're they're out there but yeah. the majority seems to be a big sound bite shot at you and a lot of it's copied and paste which irritates me <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> that's not your original thought i know it's not i've seen that on 10 other web pages yeah, the exact yeah. wording <laughs> yeah yeah but that's why i like that's why my core value is depth versus width it's like yeah and and i mean just look at the work that i do I, i'm doing 20 minute documentaries right like mm -hmm. they're not short I think there more the than, process. There's the a process. process sure. But the thing is, more than anything, I think that's what we crave mm. as human beings is depth, right? Like we talked about fake story versus real story. Mm -hmm. It's so much harder to go deeper with a fake story than it is a real story. Oh, yeah. Right. And so, yeah, there are those uh, <laughs> one minute stories that people like to try to write up and think that it's original. It's not right. Like mm. it's 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 about going deeper. Like people don't. It's not a matter like there's this saying and this myth about that uh, attention spans are, are uh, lessening and people don't watch long videos. Well, how did Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime happen? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right. Binge <But> watching. Right. <laughs> how does binge watching? It's depth. Exactly. It's right. the stories that are right. being told that take us further down and immerse us into those worlds. That's what's necessary, and um, and that's what we crave. Whether we're doing business with someone or whether we're just forming a new friendship, tell me what you're about. Like, if I don't yeah. like something, if I meet you for the first time and I don't like something that you said through us, you know, s sitting together for an hour, we may never talk again because I didn't like what you had to say. Right. right. That's the ultimate no like and trust bridge. Know who you are, like what you have to say, and then I trust that I want you a part of my world. There's definitely a difference between telling a story and telling a story. Yeah. <laughs> some people, some can tell a story, like yeah. they, they can fabricate a story yep. and thus have to keep fabricating to maintain that story. Yeah. Which eventually I, you can see the, the lack of depth that just, you <laughs> when it erodes, like, yeah, okay, you're telling a story. Yeah. But, but then there's telling a story. 
yeah, a, a yeah. real story, yeah. which I think has impact because we have a lot of people telling stories. Absolutely, and there's no story to tell. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Are you are you a, a, a sports fan? Who's your favorite? Um, I, team? Well, I like Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh um, Steelers. Okay. Growing up in West Virginia, it was it was heresy not to like them, uh, <laughs> but I so I, I loved them. We 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 were nearby Pittsburgh, so we we loved them. Growing up, loved them. Always have watched it with my dad. Yeah. Growing up, you know, um, f- football is primarily what I watch. If I watch, I, I don't have, I don't focus as much on it as I used to. I used to coach football, love football. Yeah. Uh, I've played baseball, um, tried my hand at basketball, ended up being offered the mascot position. So that didn't pan out <laughs> very well. <laughs> so- <laughs> the reason I asked that is because, uh, sports documentaries are, are some of the most fascinating ones to me. I love sports mm-hmm. documentaries. Um, I recently rewatched uh, The Last Dance with Michael Jordan's story, right? Mm. And that was a story put together from their 1998 run um, mm, of yeah. being the sixth, the, their sixth championship, Chicago Bulls. Um, what was fascinating to me about that one and just sports documentaries in general is that at first you see these athletes as just people that, you know, they, they're scoring points. Mm-hmm. But then you get to hear their stories of how they grew up and yeah. the other things that they're interested in and that they're like, I remember there was a football player. I can't remember his name now, but there was a football player who ran a chicken farm. Like he oh, was wow. playing in the NFL, but he was also yeah. very much into chickens. And it was just like, yeah. oh, that, that <laughs> makes me see him a little bit differently now. Sure. <laughs> like, <right? laughs> it, it's, it's, again, it's, I think one thing that sports got really, uh, what they got right is that they understand that if you become a fan of the player, you're there for the player and not just the team. At that mm-hmm. point. Like, it's a deeper relationship. It takes us further down into their world and immerses us. Now we're a fan, not just because we want to see them score points, but we, we truly inside want to see that person win. Right. 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 That's that's the difference. That's the yeah. Difference. I mean, I, I think of Brett Favre, uh, Brady. I mean, you know that uh, Tom Brady Dan, is one of the Mar- stories. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know, Dan Marino. You yeah. know, for years trying to get to the Super Bowl and just falling short, and then finally makes it. Yeah. And, I mean, it's things like that. You're always rooting for him, and but then again, I think teams hate that too because when that player wants to leave, that's yeah. like, <laughs> that's no. the that's the Tom Brady story, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm Brady played for New England, I think, for 17 years. Is that right? Oh, forever. I yeah. don't know. Was yeah. <laughs> I mean, but you know what I love about Tom Brady's story? I didn't know it until he came to Tampa Bay and started playing for Tampa Bay, but I didn't realize he yeah. wasn't an all he wasn't always an all-star. Like he came right. in and he wasn't even uh, uh drafted at a high level, right? right. And but he worked his behind off to the point that he's 43, 44, and still one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Like that itself is such a powerful story but i wouldn't know that without his documentary series right i wouldn't know True. i wouldn't know that without the behind the scenes that's happening that the stories that espn or nfl network are telling um it's the same thing that we could do for ourselves as entrepreneurs hmm. yeah that's true that's so true because the, the, there's the face and then there's the life behind the face it's yep. uh i mean like you're saying with those examples if you didn't know anything else, it's it's just a guy, especially with football, their face is covered half the time. <laughs> they got yeah. these big old pads on. They they look, you know, superhuman. They are kind of superhuman in yeah, a way. Yeah, yeah. But through hard work, not a potion or anything. Yeah. They they they're these like massive warriors on the field in battle, and that's just kind of how I see them. And they're just going at it. Yeah. And but you you miss the humanity behind them a lot of times because of that. Yeah, yeah. You don't get to see the three dimensional view of their lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so when you're seeing them on the field, it's very one dimensional. You're just seeing a guy moving a ball down the field, mm-hmm. down a grassy field. That's it. That's all you're <laughs> seeing. <laughs> and they're and they're almost an inanimate object. Right. I mean, because you know, I'm not the only one that can do the X's and O's and understand the plays and what goes yeah. where and who catches yeah. what. And you should have blocked here, and he missed the coverage and. And you, we could tear them apart as quickly as we can idolize them. You should have been here and you failed, and, and you know, or that was a spectacular play. But then right. you forget it's a human being. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. And it's it's when we it's when you take the helmet off and you take the pads off and you show mm-hmm. them at home or like on the chicken farm with that one player that I mentioned. Yeah, right? that's crazy. That's, that's what that's, awesome. that's what makes them just that makes them human. 
What I loved about the Last Dance, the Michael Jordan uh, docu series, is that you got to see a side of Michael Jordan you haven't seen. He's mm-hmm. fifty-seven now, I think, and you hadn't seen it in fifty years, just because wow, he never yeah. showed that side of him, right? Like, right. I think that is where you start to create new dimensions, and then what happens? Now, here's the real power of storytelling. Like, here's the whole entire point. If you weren't listening to anything else before this moment, here's the most important point: when you start to tell stories real life stories of what mm-hmm. of what your life is like who you are what you're about it can help elevate your personal brand and elevate your business to a new level when the last dance docu series came out there was a pair of jordans that sold at an auction the week after for uh, mm. 560,000 oh, dollars i can imagine wow <laughs> one pair <laughs> one scotty, pair scotty pippen nice. who was also featured in the docu series yeah. Um, he saw his sales of his shoes, which I didn't even know he still had shoes out, but his shoes and his memorabilia and things like that was shot up 50% in sales. And that it's because of the power of story. These are guys that haven't played in years. (laughs) Mm, Right. And the only thing that can match that is dying. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Which we see that. And everybody wants to buy that thing. Right. You see that with music right. artists, right? When music artists R- they pass right. away, and then that's all of a sudden their music shoots up in the rankings, yeah. and everybody wants their but best sales ever. <laughs> well, what happens when somebody dies? We're right. telling stories of stories. what we remember about that that person. Right. It's like that's when right. Kobe, unfortunately, when Kobe died, right? Like all you heard from different sports analysts was stories of the time that they met Kobe Bryant, right? right? Like it, that's it is the power of stories. Hate it or love it, this is how we mm-hmm. connect. This is how we go deeper. But it's also how we can continue to build bigger businesses. Now, we're talking about bigger, bigger faces, bigger personalities. I guess as far as being well known, yeah. Uh, I would imagine they would have. Uh, I guess I'd call them handlers <laughs> that determine who gets to see them, yeah. Who gets to talk to them, yeah. Who gets to film them, yeah. When they get to speak, when they don't get to speak, yeah. You know. Yeah. So in a way, you, you don't necessarily s- see that real person other than what the handlers want you to see. Depends. So even, even they, I, I imagine, yeah, yeah, you're right. I think but, it depends. But like for Jordan, I mean, he had this whole other side yeah. that you would think people would have dug into to find. But I can, I would only think it's because they wanted a certain image, a certain view of him. He and addresses, it may or may not, that. He oh, addresses he that. Um yeah. What it ended up being for him was that he felt like he couldn't live a life because he was so popular anywhere that he went. There's this scene, and I encourage the people listening to this to watch the docuseries if you haven't, but there's this scene of him sitting in his hotel room and he's eating food and he's like, I have to be in this hotel room to eat food because if I try to go eat food out there, I won't be able to. (laughs) Wow. Right? But again, think about that. So we, you, 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 I love that you mentioned that because you said, um, you know, they have handlers and sometimes you may not even see the real story, but just getting the behind the scenes story of why he's that way, mm-hmm. it just, mm-hmm. it takes that and it, it gives you a different perspective, right? right? But that's why, again, that's why it's so important too. I think that there are, there are other athletes who do get real about their stories and they share it regardless of like how people feel about it. And I think that's the one lesson to take away from this is that you get, you just got to be open. You got to be open and vulnerable and realize that, you know what? Not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody's going to like what you have to say, but the right ones will. I've had clients that I, that I've had, like I said, that worked with me three, four years. It's not just because I'm great at what I do. It's because Mm -hmm. they've actually formed friendships and they, they get to know who I am and know what I'm about and know my story more than just the thing that I create for them. Okay, well, why should I bend my story to you not liking me versus I just have my story whether you like it or not? <laughs> exactly. Just be unapologetic about it. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I am who I am, and uh, this is why. And yep, you know, perhaps we can come to an understanding about it and understand each other's story. But uh, you know, if you choose to dislike it, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool too. Yep, yep, yep. But your story is your truth, and no one can take that away from you. No one can take your truth away from you. So you're putting all this stuff that we've been talking about into a book called yes. the Dramatic Demonstration of Proof. Tell me about that. Yeah, so Dramatic Demonstration of Proof is the process of what I do, right? Like, it's easy to make a claim that you're one of the best that does whatever that you do, but how do you prove that? I do it uh, through visual storytelling. And so the book, 
walks you through how to tell your own story, but also walks you through how to bring that to life through video. Um, and that book will be coming out uh, towards the latter part of this year, 2021. There will also be the audio book available. I have decided to make that available for free. Mm -hmm. um, but that will be coming out and it walks you through exactly all the things that we've been talking about, being vulnerable, showing your truth. I talk through that in the book, Dramatic Demonstration of Proof. It helps you elevate your personal brand and your business to a new level. And who's, who's the voice behind that? That will be my voice. <laughs> that will be your voice. Okay. That tell your own story voice. about your story. Yeah. Tell yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I tell the story. So the book breaks down, it breaks down a little bit of my story, but it also breaks down my client's story. So I mentioned Stefan George. I, he's featured in the book. Um, Tracy Lynn, who is a, uh, tr she runs a jewelry company, multi multi-million dollar jewelry company. Mm -hmm. um, she's also featured in the book. And then Darnielle, which I speak to a little bit about the business coach. She's featured mm -hmm. in the book as well. So I tell their stories. I show how I bring their stories to life. And then I walk you through how you can do it yourself. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking like Earl Grey Jones or something being, the, you know, the, the boy, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's going to be There's a like certain voices that just make you listen, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's going to be a really cool book. That's why I'm making it available for free because it's not just the audio book. I'm, I am interviewing my clients. You So you hear some of that. And then... Uh -huh. um. I'm also, I've been featured on quite a lot of podcasts. So I'm taking some of those podcasts that I've been featured on and extending the ideas, mm. extending what I'm talking about to really, again, I'm a deaf versus with guy. So I really want to go deep and help people understand how to do this for themselves. So did I hear you right? You're, you're going to, it's not just an audio book where you read your book. You're, you're actually going to have like a people, you know, testimonies and interviews and things like that in yep. it, in the in book. It. Yeah. But or in the, the audio version of the book, in the audio version of the book, in between each chapter is going to be a extended version of like either an interview I've done with someone or something right. of that nature. Yeah. That's so cool. That's yeah. like putting to practice the storytelling in your book about storytelling, but it's in Absolutely. the audio version. That you can't get in the written version. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And you're giving that one away for free. <laughs> for free. For free. Obviously, you'll still need the book too, but I, I'm giving right. that away for free because I just I want to get this in as many hands as possible. And um, so that will only be available when it comes out on Spotify for free. But uh, the book itself will be released on Amazon. Uh, do you have a? I mean, you said towards the end of the year. Do you have uh, more? I Locked don't. In. I know it's August 2021. I, I don't have the exact date, but I know it's August. August. 2020. Yeah. August okay, 2021. So that's, that'd be here before we know it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I look forward to it. That's, yeah. That's something I will probably get a hold of just, just to hear it and uh, the, the things that you do. It's, it's fascinating. Thank you. Just, Thank you. Yeah. Well, in that, um, it, it fascinates me that, that your typical business person would go, you know, I want to have this guy around for like six months to a year, maybe three <laughs> years and filming me having no yeah. idea when he'll be done Yeah, to eventually get this video that hopefully will enhance my story Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, and have a turnaround of what I wanted to do. And I mean, that's, that's a long investment for a lot of people. Isn't it? it is, but you, you gotta, I think as an entrepreneur, you gotta be invested in the long game. Right. right. You can't think of it as just a quick exit. Even the people that do make quick exits aren't really quick exits. Sometimes it takes five years to exit a business. Um, mm. You've got to be in it for the long. It depends on the reason I work with purpose driven entrepreneurs is because it depends on what is your long game. Right. If you're building the business to serve your mission, that's a different thing than building a business just to that's make so money. That's so true. Yeah. That's so, so, true. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, get the book, judecharles.co. That is where you can um, find out more about the book and find out more about the work that I do, see the stories that I tell, and um, hopefully you can tell your own story and bring your own story to life. Jude, it's been really awesome having you with us today. You, you bring up, um, I think, something to really consider in, in how, you, you know, how we communicate, how we present, uh, well, our brand, our business, our, our mission, our goal, whatever it is that, you know, stories are important. We're human beings. We're not uh, cogs in the wheel to be used. Yeah. We, 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 like you said, our meter jumps up when we see it. Yeah, yeah. And um, and I appreciate uh, you giving us this insight today. Thank you for having me, Philip. It was definitely a fun conversation. We really did uh, go deep into this storytelling concept. You're listening to Rage of the Age. Rage of the Age. Politics, religion, economics, and history with a conservative bend. Welcome to the essay segment. 
I trust you enjoyed the interview with Jude Charles talking about storytelling and the, the things he does to put the story together and the implications and impact that stories have on us. Stories indeed do have impact on us. Uh, that is why you see a concerted effort in the telling of a story. <laughs> That's why you have these concepts of controlling the narrative. Why? Because you want to fashion the story and you want to control the story because we instinctively know that stories have an impact. That is why there's this constant need to rewrite history and basically to end the story and tell the story the way you want it told with an element of legitimacy to it being, you know, historical record and thus crafting and impacting how people think, act, and respond to the story. That is why uh, news agencies that want a certain story told will totally manipulate facts to make it fit a certain conclusion. Why? They want to use the story to gain a certain conclusion of what they're trying to control. And as Jude was saying, um, uh, as he put it, uh, our BS meters are, are pretty high these days. They, it's high up there. We have a very sensitive uh, sensor system that can pick out when uh, a story is just going awry. You can tell it's fabricated. It's, uh, it's obviously being used and twisted to accomplish some ulterior motive that has nothing to do with anything. And... We're tired of that. We're fed up with it. Uh, so even then, stories are meant to have a good impact, but they've obviously been misused and twisted. And what that means is, and what that does into our lives is, when we come across an actual story that's real, it has a huge impact and effect upon us. When something moves us in a story and, and you... And all through your sensors, you've you finally have figured out this is this is not fabricated. This is not propaganda. This isn't some kind of bait and switch thing. This is a this is the real deal. This story moves me. When we come across those, that's a game changer for us. That's when stories really have an impact in our life. And in light of that, I wanna I wanna share about the greatest story that has ever been told, a story that has personally impacted my life. It has personally impacted millions and millions of people's lives, uh, maybe even billions throughout history. And that story is found in a fascinating book called the Bible. Now, the Bible is actually a collection of books. It's not one book, it's just a collection of books, and it's a collection of books written by multiple authors living through different time periods in history, uh, not always from the same locality. They can be in different locations that they've uh, been written at. The authors were also um, sometimes very poor people, sometimes they were kings, sometimes they were prophets. Uh, there, so there was no set um, class or uh, business field, if you will. Uh, it wasn't a certain occupation that did this. You have a, a whole variety of the directions that this comes from. And yet, from all the different offers, from all of the different locations, and all the spans of time in between, you have one beautiful story. And that's an amazing thing to me. I mean, there was a time, honestly, where uh, I didn't believe that. There was a time where I didn't think that uh, it was important to consider. Uh, it didn't resonate on me until I fully, until I fully uh, basically got slammed with it uh, to know that, wow, this is one beautiful unified story, and it's about one beautiful person, and that person is Jesus Christ. But even further, the, the beauty of it is, is his story is often told through the story of other people, and those people's lives are not exactly stellar. 
Sometimes we see dysfunctional stories in the Bible, but the whole point of it is to show how dysfunctional we are, but that there is a remedy for all our dysfunction and, and that there is a hope to look forward to despite who we are because of what the bigger story is about being Jesus. And that's the amazing thing is it's a story that uses the story of broken humanity throughout all the ages to talk about the coming of a man who is the son of God, who is in the flesh like we are, but is fully divine. And he has come to do a work in us that we can't do ourselves. And even more amazing, th this guy, this man named Jesus, when, when he was teaching, his primary means of teaching was in the use of stories. Sometimes it's parables that, you know, that would uh, using a, a heavenly meaning with a, an earthly story. And he, he would just oftentimes would answer his critics with stories because stories are designed to make us think, even when we don't want to give an answer, which let's face it, is that not why we can't have common dialogue with people who disagree with us? It's just, if you make an exact statement, what's the reaction? No, that's not true. And then they make an exact statement. And then there's this argument over, well, which one's true and which one's not. No one's really thinking about what's been said. But see, when you're given a story and there's no real statement in the story other than the story itself, but the story speaks for itself, it makes you think. And that's what Jesus often did. When he challenged his critics, he would tell a story that would make them think. He, he would never give just a direct statement half the time because he knew what, it would, uh, what the response would be. And he was trying to soften their heart, not to harden their heart. And so he would tell stories. A lot of his explanations was in stories. Why? Because stories impact us. They have an influence on us. It makes us think at times when we don't want to think. It makes the hard-headed think about something that normally their hard-headedness will prevent them from even considering. That's the power of stories. Now, the Bible is story after story after story. And perhaps you, you, you view the Holy Scripture the way I used to view it, as a book of rules of do's and don'ts. And, you know, if you do these things, don't do these things. And if you're good enough, you might go to heaven. But I was so wrong. Now, certainly, you have some very obvious direct statements in the Bible, prose discourse, that, uh, as a matter of fact, is a complete statement. Um, you know, things like do not steal. Uh, th th there's no story to that. <laughs> That's just a straight-up commandment, right? Do not commit adultery. There there's no story to that. It's a straight-up command. Um, and it's meant to be taken as such. But how those direct statements are viewed are beautifully explained in the stories that surround them. The Bible is full of stories. It's full of poetry. It's full of uh, thought-provoking proverbs and, and maybe agitations at times to, to prod us into a certain direction. And it is one lengthy story brought together from a record of humanity to show us how broken we are as humanity, as if we need to be explained that. I mean, <laughs> do you not look at humanity now without any history book and go, what is wrong with you? And then there's someone that's uh, on the other side of the world looking at you with the same response, looking at humanity, including you, going, what is wrong with you? We know there's something wrong with us. We know that there's a, a, a malfunction <laughs> in who we are. And that's what the Bible shows through stories, but it also shows the story of God's grace. Grace of where God is willing to bestow a forgiveness and a restoration to an individual in order to make that connection with God again, to pull us from our depravity and to pull us more into his direction 
And that's what the overall objective of the story of the Bible is, to show God's grace, to offer his mercy to us, that he wants reconciliation, and that the greatest story of that whole story told is that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is God making the ultimate first move on our behalf. And it is something he gives out of a genuine concern for you, and he wants you to accept it. And that is just got to be the most awesome story that has ever been told. You've been listening to Rage of the Age. If you love today's podcast, make sure to leave a review on the media you're listening through. Secure future episodes by heading over to rageoftheage.com and clicking the RSS feed button. Until next time, this has been Rage of the Age.